<sighs> hey guys, Harry here. Back with another Brick Lane vlog. Uh, today we're doing some block work cut ups. Uh, this is a party wall, traditional style block work cut up, you know, heavy blocks, the old back breakers. Um, on a new site today, or well, this week, shall I say, uh, started here on, on Tuesday. Uh, to go and do this cut up, did the first you know four or five course off the tread deck, and then uh, we got a table lift put up today, and uh, made a start in the garage this morning. Uh, got about five course on up to up until they had uh, until the management told me to stop and uh, go up onto this and finish it off. I wasn't too happy about doing it, but um, wasn't too much of an hassle to do. And to be honest, I was a bit relieved that I could get it done today. And not have to go back tomorrow or Friday and do it. So, uh, you know, these heavy blocks, they are a grueler. Uh, guys in Ireland seem to be doing a lot of block work. It's a lot of block layers over there. Not a lot of brickwork going on in Ireland, it seems. Uh, you know, a lot of rendering and stuff. But, like, these heavy blocks, no joke, you know. You know, in these days, we with, with a lot of firms uh, paying, you know, like, 160 a block on these is, you know, really nice, £16 a metre. Uh, you know, normally 10 blocks to a metre squared, but you know, they're not too bad, but they're still, you know, they're an hard day's graft, they're every work. And a one, uh, there's one channel I watch, Stephen Alex Brick Lane, uh, Brick Lane with Stephen Alex. Uh, I watch one of their live live uh, shows, live uh, streams, should I say, live shows. <laughs> uh, I was watching the live streams, and you know, the older geezer, Steve, said, you know, but Rick layers aren't paid enough. And, you know, I agree, to be honest, because, you know, you know, there's some guys, you know, will say, oh, we earn good money, you know, for the hours we do and, and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the only few of us earn good money, you know what I mean? There's only a certain few Rick layers who earn really good money for the hours they do. And it takes fucking years and years of skill and graft and hard work and actually going flat out to earn the good money. So you're not getting paid for nothing. It don't come for free. It comes with really hard graft. And, you know, I've even heard bricklayers say, oh, you know, we only work 25, 30 hours a week. And that might be true, actual time laying bricks, but the actual time preparing, you know, getting onto site, traveling, getting your getting your gear loaded up, etc., etc. We're spending, you know, 40, 40 plus hours a week, maybe up to 50 hours a week, you know, preparing, getting ready, traveling to work and, um, you know, we're not that well paid for what we have to do, especially us price workers. You know, you can make some money on price, but you're grafting your tits off for it. You know what I mean? You're coming home late. You're fucking, you're working until you fucking, you know, your blood sugar's dropping, you're knackered. And, and I'm, uh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, and, you know, Brit late, you know, the prices should increase. You should keep increasing because at the end of the day, uh, we should be able to earn a good living, a very good living uh, for putting in some graft because, you know, there ain't people queuing up for this job. You know, Brick Lane ain't a desirable trade. There's no power tools um, for the majority of the work. You know, it's heavy, old fashioned. Uh, it's a lot of heavy lifting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, you know, I won't blame anyone who, who would look at this and think this is a fucking hard job because it is. And, uh, you know, we, the pay, you know, the pay is starting to reflect it more, but, you know, it's not where it needs to be, you know. You know, it, it could creep up an, an extra couple hundred quid a thousand. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people would agree that we'd be getting to where, you know, an hard day's graft is paid well every day and not just on really good days. So, uh, anyway, how I attempted this build the uh, on the on the, on the old party wall, um, because obviously you got to, you know, use party wall roll insulation. I like to build the corners first and get them insulated both skins so I'll build both skins insulate them as I go every block um, every block uh, you know I'll put a, a you know a skin of insulation in. I use about I try to cut the insulation into about three foot pieces uh, you know slide them in wiggle them in side to side uh, just to minimize you know like the spreadage of the skins and uh, and when basically when uh, you know when I can when I've got like a block thickness at each side i'll slide a bit of insulation in and then obviously i'll build you know one skin up four or five course at one side then back it up insulating as i go and that's how i did it with this uh with this wall 
Uh, got the line running on the overhand side, obviously, because we're only working from one side. Uh, got the line running on the inside of the party wall. A lot of guys say you need your, you know, you need your line on the outside because that's the face side, but um, I found that doesn't need, you know, that's not always the case. You lay a lot faster with the line, you know, on your face side that you're laying to. Uh, and it's a lot easier and it all it takes is just a lean over the wall check none of your blocks are lipping every so many course and if the one is no no issue just fucking grab a little brick hammer or your trowel and just tap the odd block in that's lipping and uh, especially if you've got someone doing the jointing like i had today obviously my dad was with me i like to have my dad with me on all sort of cut-up jobs that require you know more intense uh, hands-on laboring uh you know he was pointing up uh towards the end of the day because we we're on ready mix so it was quite wet the mortar uh, it kept quite well on these these heavy blocks uh he was joined up since the end of the day and he makes a really good job of jointing so to be honest it makes any 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 brick work whether it's good or bad look mint so i didn't have to worry about the back looking uh looking bad because he made a really good job with jointing uh, does a better job than me myself to be honest about 95 percent of the time a lot of time, I, I obviously, I have joined to port quicker and I tend to rush a little bit when I'm jointing. Uh, just out of habit, not because I'm rushing, just I tend to just not be as finicky sometimes. And, you know, it does show my jointing card compared to my dad's. It's not quite as neat, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm almost there. Uh, but, um, obviously, just building the outside skin first. And uh, I was just using big corners, using the six foot level. Um, Obviously, if you guys have seen my Magnuson level review, that's the Magnuson level I'm using, the six foot one. It's really handy for tailing out big block corners, especially obviously when you're racking them back at, each, at both sides with the with a cut. Uh, obviously, because of the cut up, you have like 100 mil bit of tolerance where you can see the cut. So as long as it's within 100 mil of the wood, you obviously you're not going to see it from the uh, from the loft, and you're not going to see it obviously above, obviously because it'll be below the truss for the roofer. Uh, but uh, building the big corners out, you know what I mean, five blocks long, five up, obviously get your five course and filling them in. I find it's one of the easiest methods and obviously on these cut ups you ain't got to sweat about gauge or level too much because obviously it's block work, it's not really seen. And uh, obviously gauge where you cut up, the, you know, it's just a cut up, it's how it's going to go. Like I say, same again, get your level on, check it somewhat like, you know, nice consistent 10mm joints, uniform blocks. Um, Try not to, you know, try to keep your bond on your block work the best you can. Obviously, with these cuts, sometimes, you know, you end up having a cut and then an 100mm piece. Um, there's no wrong with it, really. Like, you know, some firms might be finicky, but then I'd just say to them, provide me my cuts, and then you'll have a perfectly lapped bonded wall all the way through. But like today, um, we didn't have his cutter with us, and the, the blocks were quite easy to cut with a uh, hammer and chisel. Uh, I wasn't going to bring a still saw up since they emphasised that they wanted, you know, you know, water suppression, etc. And I, and I don't want the dust factor. I don't like the sound of the still saw. I don't like the dust factor. And cutting through these heavy blocks, it's a pain in the ass. They create some right debris. So we just want to, we just sm smacked them with the old uh, hammer and chisel, and uh, it made a good enough job. You know what I mean? It, it was, you know, it's nothing to cry on about these these sort of cut ups. You know, my work isn't the neatest of the neat, but you know. It's you know it's to good good standard, and uh, it's solidly built. You know what I mean, and uh, and and you know I know I know when to be neat when it counts. You know what I mean with some of these, some of these awkward jobs. You know sometimes you just got to get them done, especially if they're uh, pushing for the house finishing. Um, you know for roof going on etc etc. Sometimes when in uh, when in Rome build like the Romans. But <laughs> that's a quote I heard from, from an old uh, uh, brick lane nerd like myself. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so I've cut these video. I've got about 45 minutes of footage from this cut up. There's me obviously building this back skin and then there's uh, me building the front skin as well. Uh, cam the, my phone ran out of uh, space, so I couldn't quite get the rest of the front skin recorded. But uh, I apologize for the camera angle being a bit like down near my arse. Um, it's just the only place I could get it wedged on this little uh, this little table lift which was pretty solid to be honest to be fair to scaffolders one of the best table lifts i've been on in a while it was you know four boards wide didn't didn't shake and uh you know what i mean it was uh, it was pretty good It was pretty good so i hope you guys enjoy the uh different types of content i'm gonna go over a few more tips when it comes to block work and uh, insulating 
party walls in the uh, in the next part so we've got another two parts to come after this one um Oh, sorry about that. Just have to drink the Moretti. We're going a bit warm. Now I've got another one sat on the table because I thought I'm doing this commentary. Got a voice over. We've got two uh, Morettis. I've converted to bottles now because I used to drink cans on a night and cans get a bit, uh, you can taste the can a little bit. I've gone to bottles now. It's a bit more expensive, but you drink less. So, you know, it's a way to cut down the drinking midweek. But. When I'm doing these voiceovers, my throat tends to get a bit dry, and after I've had a beer or so, you know, the words tend to roll off my tongue a bit easier. Uh, I tend to be able to do the, you know, the voiceover in about two takes. I tend to get like five minutes in and fuck it up, and then you know the first about minute takes me, you know, three attempts to get right, and then normally I hit a flow with this one. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, before the clip ends, I'm just trying to look at the timeline when it ends. Um, when it comes to laying block work in general, especially the heavy blocks, like just same again, use the flat spread for a lot of traditional building, the flat spread groove. Um, I find it, you know, it gives you a solid base when laying the uh, laying the solids. Uh, when it comes to thermal blocks, you know, they're a bit of a pain in ass to lay in summer. They're not so bad if they're wet, but thermal blocks tend to go off straight away. You tend to just have to have your gobble like piss and get them right first time when you bang them down. But with these solid blocks they're nowhere near as much of a hassle um especially in summer they're no, they're no trouble in winter they can get a little bit floaty all over the place but you've just got to get your mortar stiffer um not too stiff but stiffer and you know just take your time try not to bang bang the box as much just press them into place and you shouldn't go far wrong really you know what i mean with these heavy blocks i've talked a lot of brick layers and they, they prefer to use them over the thermals uh, you know, like the Jorox or the, you know, Cellcom. Uh, which, you know, in a way I agree with them, but you can't get around the, the, you know, the weight of them. They're just heavy. At the end of the day, you do feel like you've done an hard day's work. And to be honest, the price of a block at 160, I've said this in the last video, when a, when a brick's 55p and a block's 160, you can lay three, you can lay three bricks just as quick as you can a block. Uh, you know, with less physical strain, less effort. Uh, you know, especially with pick and dip. You know, I mean, the, I'm obviously there's no pick and dip in this video, uh, but me being a big pick and dip enthusiast, uh, it's all about ease of effort. You know what I mean? So limiting your effort you put in, uh, and just making it easier in general. Which these heavy blocks, it's not an easy day when you when you lay them, but I just find you've got to just get them get them get them uh, thrown in, and uh, you know get off of them as quick as you can. Get up, get back on some bricks. So uh, in the next few videos after after I finish with the uh, with this cut up, uh, we'll be back in a garage uh, using some very traditional style bricks. You know what I mean? I, you know they're a her another heritage style brick, but they're even more oldy worldy as you could say. So very ideal for pick and dip a very shallow frog in them so uh you can use even less gobbo when it comes to the pick and dip on those bricks and they're quite light as well which i like um the ready mix tends to be a little bit sandy uh so we're still jointing up every like two course but obviously not having to join the back takes away a lot of the hassle so uh i'm doing a three i'm doing a two profile setup we are wrapped back at the back again and there isn't a front pillar at the uh, at the front this time. It's just a two brick return. So a little bit of a different setup with the garage. I've uh, got some brick, some red brick detail around the uh, on top of the fifth on top of the sixth course. Well, the fifth course I've laid, but sixth course from the uh, garage floor. So we've got a bit of like uh, English bond. It's like an English bond over sale uh, feature banding. So I'll try to get a bit of footage of me doing that, laying the snappers. Uh, not done that not done that sort of detail before but it's just you know it's same rules apply when it comes to any sort of uh, red brick projecting detail so anyway guys thanks for watching i'll enjoy the rest of this beer beautiful and i'll uh, see you in the next brick lane vlog tomorrow all right guys have a good night <laughs>